Hey, this is David with Commotion Engine. Thanks for watching this video. The goal of this video is just to give you, the illustrator, a very quick overview of how our process works so that uh, you just have an understanding of the big picture. A lot of the problems we get with our artwork just stem from the fact that um, the illustrator doesn't understand the, the workflow, uh, the After Effects workflow, how the animation comes together. And so this just gives you a very fast look at that and I think it'll give you more perspective on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you a storyboard that we've put together and when you illustrate obviously you'll get these from us. Um, one of the common complaints we have with the storyboards is very often the illustrators will just copy the storyboards exactly what they see. They'll just go in and completely copy it. And what we want you to do is not just copy the artwork that you see in here, we want you to actually think about what is being communicated. So read the script, understand the customer, and then basically say, okay, this is the concept here, but is there any way I can make it better or even put my own spin on it? We don't want these storyboards to be limiting to you. We want them to just get you in the right area conceptually. And tying off of that, one thing we like is to have too much artwork. Very often we get just the bare minimum. But if you do extra things, that gives us latitude when we're animating to throw in some more things and add more detail and generally just make it more interesting. So from here, I'm going to go to the actual artwork for this project. And you'll see that it corresponds to what you just saw. It's been filled out nicely. And this is a whiteboard style video. So the animation that's on it is very simple. Usually we're just revealing it. There's not a lot of secondary animation. But um, one thing you want to do when you get the artwork is we really like to have it formatted the same way that the storyboard is. So each frame, frame one, is the artwork from frame one of the storyboard. Frame two is from frame two of the storyboard. And that just makes it easier for the animator to see where things are. You might find yourself duplicating artwork and using it several times in several frames. But that's OK. That just makes our process easier. So the next thing you'll see is in the layer panel on the right, we have two layers here. We have artwork and the grid here that's been locked. These layers, this hierarchy here, is exactly how it's going to come over when it's imported into After Effects. So when you start getting into complex uh, animation, sometimes it's nice to have pieces separated into different layers. So um, just to give you a quick example of that, you could take this first layer here, you create a new one over here and then what we do is we move this artwork up into that layer and you might call that frame one artwork. Now for this project that's not very necessary but that's just going to show you how After Effects is going to read these files and how the uh, animator is going to be dealing with them. So the second thing I want to address and this is a common complaint is very often when we get files from our illustrators um, they have taken some of the artwork and they vectorized it or they've taken text and they vectorized it and you know it looks the same but very often we want to come back and adjust things as the animator is working on the project you know he wants to come back and says oh, I need to change this uh, this title here I need to change the artwork I need to add to it and it makes it very hard for us to modify it when you've gone in and you vectorize it like this text here you can see has been vectorized so we would prefer it if you would leave your artwork leave the fonts in there leave the brushes the way you made it and that way it just makes it very flexible and we also don't have to go back to you to change something we can just change it ourselves and it'll save you an extra step the last thing I want to talk about while we're in Illustrator here is color space. Um, video is always RGB color space. CMYK is used for print, but we always work with RGB unless we're printing the artwork out onto paper. And so we would like it if the color space was in RGB format. You can see this is in CMYK. It should be in RGB. If you don't put it in RGB, the colors are going to shift slightly when they go to After Effects. And so the final result isn't going to look exactly like you intended. So just make sure uh, you go over here, go to color mode, and you switch it to RGB color, and then you work in that mode. The second thing is there are certain colors that will not read inside of After Effects. We've learned this the hard way. Uh, one color is a Pantone color. If you import that, After Effects just has no idea what that is, and it usually looks wrong. The second one would be a spot color. So before you are you know, you're finishing things out, maybe the client had a Pantone color for their branding standard. Um, you can work that way, but before we get it, we would like you to convert it to regular RGB color values. So just make sure you check that before you finish.
So the last thing I want to do in this video is just show you very quickly how this comes into After Effects. And this will give you some insight into the uh, animator's process. So uh, animator is going to be working in After Effects here. And they're going, to go, they're going to go to your project. And here's the artwork we just looked at right there. They're going to import it like this. OK. And you can see now um, how this has come over. So you'll see immediately that we've got the artwork layer and the grid layer. The reason you don't see that third layer is I did not save the document. Um, but you can see that's exactly how it comes over. So they're going to usually have to go through and just create a bunch more layers so that they can independently animate things. So let me give you a quick example of how that might actually look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back over to this. I'm going to save this out as a second copy. I'm going to call, call this just finished artwork for animation and I'm just going to focus on this one frame right here so we've got the, the family sitting in front of the table so I'm going to shut all this other stuff off and I'm trying to think about what do I want to animate separately like maybe I want the the plates to come in separately maybe I want the people to come in separately or maybe I want the kid here to come in separately so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some blank frames and I'm going to move her into this one and I'm going to take these, put that into one layer, put this one into another layer, put this one into another layer. Okay, now it's going to be hard to separate these people out because you can see there's no artwork behind them. So this is a situation where if the animator wanted that done, they would have had to say, okay, make sure you create the whole person, not just part of them. So we can't separate these out. But what we'll do is we'll stick them in their own layer as well. So then the next thing that's going to make it easier to do or to keep track of is let's, an let's uh, label these. So we have, let's just put girl for this one. And we know what these are. I'm just going to do plate one, plate two, plate three, and we'll just do table. So we've got all these different layers right here, and we can leave these other ones there. Those are obviously not formatted right. So save the file out. Okay, jump back over to After Effects. Let's pull it in as a composition. And now you'll see down here in my layer panel, these layers just um, have appeared here just like I had them in Illustrator. So I'm going to shut these, these off. And the nice thing now is if I want to animate things, um, these are independently controllable. So I could take this, animate her off screen, have her come in. Obviously, that's way too slow. It would be in really quickly. This is just to show you how these layers are going to be worked with, just to give you better insight. The last thing I want to do talking about layers here would be um, just layer hierarchy. After Effects cannot see what's inside of these layers. So in Illustrator, obviously, you can create groups. You can create layers inside of layers instead of sublayers. After Effects, though, only sees this top level. So anything you do inside of that kind of doesn't even count. So if the Illustrator or, or sorry, if the animator needs a lot of special layers, you just need to keep that in mind. Well, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching.